Hi, this video is to show how to use the gear generator in Tinkercad to produce a gear and pinion. So I've titled this drawing, or this model, M1 Pinion 10T. Pinion is the word we give to the smaller driving gear, um, and the pinion matches up with the larger uh, driven gear. This gear is going to be 10T, which means 10 teeth, and the M stands for Module 1, which is the way we size a metric gear. So come over to uh, your basic shapes, and under Shape Generators, you want to look at All. I also want to point out that you also have a Favorites option here. So if you dig through um, All Shape Generators, you're going to scroll around, and a few pages in here, you will find uh, metric and standard gear generators. Here they are. Now you notice I have these starred. When you find these shape generators you like, go ahead and star them right away. The useful gear uh, comes with a uh, hole for the shaft already in the center, but I'm sticking with the metric um, because of the, the module, something I'm familiar with. So first note that as you increase the module, um, you increase the size of the teeth, or what we call in gear terminology, the involute. And one reason I like using the metric gear is because of the shape of the involute compared to the shape that you get here out of the useful gear. So, uh, so far, I seem to have had reasonable success 3D printing gears with teeth as small as this module one and or at least that's what we're going to start with for testing this out. So I'll just type one. Um, this is to be a 10 tooth pinion and I'm going to leave pitch angle at 20 and unless I have some reason to change that um, I'm, I'm going to make sure that my driven gear is also at, at a pitch angle of 20. I just want to keep that equal. Now notice I've selected a top view and I also am going to take the step, if you see right now we're in a perspective view, I'm going to go ahead and switch to an orthographic or a parallel projection. You see a little strangeness here in this generation, but I think everything does come out pretty well even. Um, I may want to drag a ruler to a, gi a given point so that I can just uh, center this thing center this pinion okay exactly sorry I lost myself there a little bit uh, but I, I know that I want to center this there's the use midpoint function okay uh, exactly zero it on the ruler so that I can center the hole there also. Okay, so we're centered up on the ruler now. Um, the next thing I'll do, or maybe the last thing, is go back to basic shapes. And just put a cylindrical hole in this one because I, I intend for this gear to press fit onto uh, my generator with a two millimeter shaft. So in 3D printing, these holes tend to print quite a bit smaller. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the diameter to 3 millimeters, a full millimeter larger than I know I want the hole to be. If I put these distances to the center line at 0, uh, things should be pretty well centered up. And now uh, maybe the last thing I want to do is reduce the overall height of my gear to 5 millimeters. I think I just um, had the hole select selected actually, so I'll make the gear or the pinion 5 millimeters as well. With these things selected, I can hit D and drop both onto the work plane. And now um, either using either selecting everything and using my group button 
or by just using the keyboard shortcut control G I'm going to turn that into a finished gear with a hole in the center very important again to make sure that hole and that center are, are centered on a midpoint you can use the alignment tool for that but you saw me use the ruler to get that perfect alignment I'm now ready to select this part it's the only part in the model so um, I could select that as an STL for 3d printing